All right, Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. As always, we like to first and foremost give all praises to the Most High and Bash Mishai Barwah. Thank you for this blessed and beautiful Shabbat. Salakia. This will be lesson one for this Shabbat. Uh, we have another lesson coming after this. This lesson's title is Too Late in the Game. And, um, you know, before we get started, we'll do our disclaimer. Here at the Children of the Highest Promise Church, we teach according to St. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. We teach and we baptize all nations. Um, we're not going to sit in the most high, highest seat and separate the goats from the sheep or the tares from the wheat. Um, so with that, we don't base off things off appearance. We're not going to judge a person and say they look like they're Israel. This person doesn't. We're going to do what the scriptures tell us, and that is to try all the spirits. So with that, the title of the lesson is It's Too Late in the Game. Uh, pretty much, you know, we need to get this understanding that if we've been in this walk for some time, it's too late to turn back. You have been blessed with too much knowledge. And like it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, with much, with much knowledge comes much grief. Um, so you need to understand that at first when we got this word in us, when we, we ate that roll that was sweet and it tasted like honey in our mouth, um, you know, we, we were overzealous for the most high. You know, we wanted to get as much study as we could in. We wanted to tell everybody that we can. But now, as you ate that roll and you started living this way and you started doing the things that the most high commanded you to do and you dealt with everybody acting how they're going to act because they're going to look at you as you're the odd person out. But now that that roll is bitter in the belly and now that... The time has come for you to be active and for you to be doing the things and, and for you to be the one people are coming against, for you to be the one that the spirits are going to be coming after. Um, it's too late in the game to turn back. So with that, we're going to get into our first scripture. It's going to be in the book of Galatians, chapter 6 and verse 7. So make sure you have your Bibles, your pens, your pencils, your highlighters, your notepads. Get these scriptures down. Um, we're going to be covering a lot today. But... um all praise to the Most High, it is the Shabbat, so nobody should have anything else to do. Um, so with that, you know, let's keep in mind that um, iniquity is abounding, and it's only increasing. Um, sin is at an all-time high. Many, you know, as we see, they look for temporary gratification uh, to fill a void in their life. And if you are in this truth, you shouldn't be looking for that. You should be filling the void in your life with this word with fellowshipping with your brothers and your sisters um, and asking the Most High to allow you to grow. Um, so with that, we're going to get into the book of Galatians, chapter 6 and verse 7. And, uh, whenever you're ready, you are. Book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. Ahia is not mocked. So keep in mind, the Most High, he cannot be mocked. No matter what you do, no matter what you think, no matter what you say, he will not be mocked. Um, you know, just like uh, you had uh, that one uh, comedic, comedic dude named Polite, and he was, he was about to have a debate. Before that debate, he had a Bible. He went and he was shooting it up with the AK. He's going to he's gonna have to pay for that because he was doing that to mock the Most High and to mock what, to mock what we follow. So you know, keep that in mind, the Most High, he will not be mocked. Go ahead, Ock. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall also he reap. So whatever you're sowing, that's what you're going to get. And we about to, man, verse 8 is going to expound on that. I don't even need to say anything on that. Go ahead, I'll get verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Crystal clear. You sowing things to your flesh, you're going to reap corruption. Because that's all you're living for, to gratify this, this sinful flesh. It just wants to drag you to hell with it. Go ahead, I'll. But he that sowed to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So that's what we're doing. Every time we get into this book, we're sowing to the Spirit. Every time we take the time to put precepts together to, to bring forth the lesson, we're sowing to the Spirit. Every time we call our brother, we call our sister, we go over some scriptures, we're sowing to the Spirit. You hand out that flyer. Whatever your means is of doing work for the kingdom, you're sowing to your Spirit. Go ahead, up. And let us not be weary and well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So let's not be weary. We got to make it into the end. He that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So we must be enduring to the end. We don't look at anything that we're doing like, 
we're going to get a break at some point. It doesn't work that way. You know, we all have a job, we go to work, but this job that we have right here, which is our primary job, it never ends from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep. And you might be doing so much work for the Most High that even in your sleep, you have to fight off demons. It does happen. So with that, we're going to keep in mind that at the end of the day, we can't deceive the Most High. Like it says in the book of Sirach, his eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. He beholds everything and he considers everything in secret. Um, so he knows the intentions behind everything that we're doing. He knows if we're, we're doing it just to be seen of men or if we're doing it because we're truly sincere and we want to serve him and be obedient unto his commands that he's given us. So we must continue to do, to do well to those around us and keep his commandments with patience until the very end. If we hope to make it to the kingdom, we must walk in that same spirit that is eternal. So with that, we're now going to 1 Peter chapter 3. We're going to get verse 17. And please follow along with us. Um, you should always have your Bible with you um, when we're going over these scriptures. As you see, we, you know, we, we print these things out to make it more convenient for us. So we encourage you to follow along and see if we're actually coming from these scriptures. Um, so make sure you have your King James. That's all we ever use. And make sure you have your Apocrypha with you because we are going to be going into that today. So with that, we're going to 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 17. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 17. For it is better if the will of Ahiah be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. So, I'm sure we all have examples in our life where we were suffering for evil-doing. I have plenty of examples. My brother has plenty of examples. We all come from different walks of life. We might have similar trials and tribulations that we had in the past. We all have one thing for certain, and that is we have suffered for evil doing. So wouldn't it be better that we suffer for the Most High, that we suffer for well-doing, that we suffer to keep these commandments, that we suffer to teach our people? If we can suffer for our wickedness, we can suffer for the Most High. Go ahead, uh, go ahead verse 18. Verse 18. For Hamashiach also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. So Yeshia, he suffered for our sins. He's the just, we were the unjust. We were the wicked. Man, we were so wicked, we don't even deserve the sacrifice that he made. But most high, he continued to show us mercy. He kicked us in the head to wake us up, let us know who we are. And now, nothing, nothing should be making you turn back. It's too late in the game for that. Always go back to the scriptures. Always read about what Yeshia went through. And that's what you should be remembering on Passover. Um, go ahead, up. That he might bring us to a higher, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. And it is through him we're able to have access unto the Most High. He's our intercessor now. So keep that in mind. You don't believe in Yeshia? Hey, may the Most High have mercy on your soul. Go ahead, Ock. Let's get verse 19. Verse 19. By which also... He went and preached unto the spirits in prison, mm -hmm. which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of Ahia waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. So, keep in mind, the Most High, he was long suffering. He had Noah out there preaching for 120 years. Only eight people made it to the other side. Um, so, never be discouraged when no one wants to listen to what you have to say. When you're coming out of these scriptures and people don't want anything to do it, that's fine. Not everybody is going to take to these to this word as we would like them to, especially our family and our friends. But, Yeshaya said, he said, his sheep hear his voice. So keep that in mind. We're looking for those lost sheep. Um, so with that, we're now going to get into the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. In verse 6, and um, we're going to learn about this faith. Because without this faith, it's impossible to please the Most High. And if you're questioning your faith at this moment, and you've been in this truth for some years, it's, it's too late in the game for that. You know, Maybe you need to go fast, you need to go pray, you need to really figure out what it is you want out of this life. Um, number one, it doesn't even belong to you anymore, especially if you went into that water and came out. So with that, we're going to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and we're going to get verse 6. 
Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, is it, is a, it is impossible to please him. Read that again. Huh? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Crystal clear. Without faith, you can't please the Most High. Because with that faith, you're going to keep his commandments. You're going to do all the things he told you to do. You're going to go out and preach that word. Go ahead. Huh? For he that cometh to higher must believe that he is. So if you're thinking about coming into this truth, you must believe that he is. If you've been in this truth and you don't believe that he is, but you're doing this because it's some sort of phase or some sort of trend that you think is cool to, to call yourself a Hebrew Israelite, you really need to check yourself because without faith you can't please him. And everybody can see right through you if that's what you're doing. So if you come to the Most High, you must believe that he is. Go ahead on. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you must believe he is a rewarder of those that seek him diligently. Truly seeking him out of a pure heart. You don't believe he's going to reward you? Chances are you won't get a reward. Um, go ahead. Let's get um, verse 7. Verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of higher of the things not seen as yet, moved with fear. So Noah... He was out there preaching about this flood to come from the Most High for 120 years. Think about it. After 100 years passed, people are probably looking at Noah like, man, this crazy dude, he keeps talking about this storm that's going to come, this rain. We've never seen rain. What is he talking about? Go ahead. Uh. Move. By faith, Noah, being warned of Ahiah, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, mm -hmm. by which he con condemned the world and became heir of the righteous, the righteousness which is by faith. So Noah, he built that ark, only his family got on it, only his wife and his sons and their wives, and um, Most High, he condemned the world with that flood, and he became the heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Um, so with that, we're now going to read about Abraham. Um, go ahead, I'll get verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, after receiving an inheritance, obey. And when he went out, not knowing wherein he went. All right, so I encourage all our brothers and sisters to get the book of Jasher if you don't have it. And read it, read about the story of Abraham and read how he left his father's home and he went somewhere that he did not know and he just did it. Most High said, do this. He did it. He didn't question it. Um, go ahead out and get verse 9. Verse 9. By faith, he soldiering in the land of promise as in, strange, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. So. Abraham, he went out, didn't even know where he was at, but he was in the land that was promised to him. He was in a, it seemed to him as a strange country. You got to keep in mind, this was the land of Canaan. They still had the Nephilims and all these things running around. And he's sojourning in a land with giants. And he had faith that the Most High, he's going to deliver this land to him. That's how we, we must be looking now at what our giants are that we're facing today as we go in this walk. Our giants is all the wickedness, all the temptations, everything out there that's trying to pull us down. We must cleave unto the Most High's word and have that faith and know that we will receive that promise. And we can't let any of these things that could be a distraction, we can't let those things distract us. We can't let our family, our, our so-called friends, nothing, nothing should be able to distract us. Um, go ahead, let's get verse 10. Verse 10, for he looked for a city which hath foundation, whose builder and maker is Ahiah. And that's what we're looking for today. That new Jerusalem, whose builder and maker is the Most High. That is what we're looking for. We want to receive that kingdom. So keep all these things in mind. That's why we're supposed to go back into these scriptures. And that's why it tells us it's there for our comfort, to, to reaffirm our, our faith, to keep us strong in this word. In this walk, you should be getting your daily bread every single day. That's why it's called daily bread. Um, so with that, just keep in mind, if you feel like your faith is, is lacking, go back. Go back into the scriptures. Maybe you're not studying the way you need to study. Go back into that book and let the, ask the Most High to 
give you encouragement and to motivate you to be where you need to be. Because we all got to do it. I got to do it myself. I got to ask the most high to keep giving me more gas so I can keep pushing because I want to make it to the end. None of us are exempt. It don't matter how long you've been in this truth. It doesn't matter how many times you, you read the Bible. It doesn't matter how many lessons you taught. You still are going to need that encouragement and motivation that can only come from the Most High. And that comfort that can only come from the Holy Spirit. But you must be obedient unto Him to receive. So with that, we're now going to 2 Peter chapter 2. And we are going to get verse 2. Whenever you're ready, uh, 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. This is what people are going to do. They're going to follow what they want to do. They want to follow their wickedness. You know, they're going to, for some time, they're going to look at this truth and they're going to take it in. And then there's going to be things of their flesh that they don't want to correct. And when you question them about it out of love and, and from wanting to see them do good so that they can make it to the kingdom themselves. They're going to look at you and, and act like you're being a Pharisee or act like you're, you're being some sort of way when all you're doing is just going to the same scriptures they say they believe in. But because they want to do, they want to follow their pernicious ways, they're going to speak evil of the truth. Go ahead, up. And through covetousness shall they with finished words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Mm -hmm. For if a higher spirit, not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment mm -hmm. and spared not the old world, but saved Noah and eight persons, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in, bringing in the flood upon the world of ungodly. So we've got to keep in mind, Noah was a preacher of righteousness and only his family went with him on the ark. Keep that in mind. You feel like you were alone? You had Noah. You feel like you were alone? Abraham called out on his own. Always got to remember, sometimes, well, you know, not everybody has the, the luxury of being woken up by a group of brothers in their area. Some people are waking up just based off of videos, and there is somewhere where they know nobody else that understands and knows that they're a Hebrew Israelite and that they're going to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. They have nobody to gather with. They have their Shabbat. They spend it by themselves <laughs> with a laptop or with their phone. Scripture's open. So you feel like you're alone? Remember Noah. Remember Abraham. Go ahead, Ak. Let's get um, verse 6. Second Peter chapter 2, and verse 6. Turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. So, crystal clear, fire and brimstone. You can go on YouTube and look up documentaries of Sodom and Gomorrah, and they're going to show you what that place looks like, as well as that pillar of salt that Lot's wife was turned into. You don't believe? Go look it up. Go see. Read about that judgment. Read about how that land was, how, um, you know, the angels, they came to visit Lot. And these homosexuals looked at these angels and they thought that they were men and they desired them and went to Lot's house trying to get in, trying to break the door down, saying, Lot, if you don't give them to us, we're going to do worse with you. Make an example of what's going to happen to this place today because this is spiritual Sodom, spiritual Egypt, spiritual Babylon, the whore daughter. Making an example. So that was an example for you guys to wake up, pay attention, and not do what everybody else is doing. So it's crystal clear. Go back, read these things, read about what happened. You're not sure? This word is a sure thing. Probably one of the only sure things you will ever have in your life. Um, so go ahead, Ock, let's get verse 7. Verse 7. And deliver just lot. Mm -hmm. Vixed with vexed with the filthy conversations of the wicked mm -hmm. so don't let the filthy conversations of the wicked vex you don't play into when you hear people talking about whatever they're talking about whether you're at the workplace or 
you, you know, you, you, you're just getting into this truth and you, you're visiting your old friends or whatever it is, your family, and you hear them talking about whatever, don't let that vex you, don't let that bother you. You might be the one that's, the only one that's delivered. And be grateful for that. Be grateful that you're the only one that can see it. Because would you rather be asleep? Go ahead, Ak. Let's get um, eight. Verse eight, yeah. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So that's something that we we deal with. We you know it doesn't necessarily vex us in that manner, but we see this wickedness abounding. And it bothers us. We go to the workplace. We hear about people being whoremongers and whores. It disgusts us. We hear about people, you know, getting high, doing whatever. It it, it just disgusts us. We go to the store and we see two dudes holding hands. That two women hold. It should disgust you. Make you feel sick inside. Like, this is not correct. It, nah. But this is what we must see. Same thing. We go to the store and we see a woman that's half-dressed. It's like, put some clothes on. Respect yourself. Especially if they're a Hebrew Israelite. It, it, man. From day to day, we see all these unlawful deeds, all these unlawful acts, mannerisms and customs that the society does. But through all that, don't let it bring you down because you're the odd man out. Thank the most high you can see. It's, it's too late. If you're feeling like you want to turn back, it's too late. Um, so let's get verse 9 on. Verse 9, the Most High knoweth how to deliver the, the godly out of temptation mm -hmm. and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. So the Most High, he gave us what we need to get out of that temptation. If temptations are really, really, really bothering you, you're not getting enough of the word. Of course, we're all going to deal with temptations on, on every level. It's going to happen. But sometimes we just... Okay, whatever. And if you're actually sitting there entertaining the thought and you're playing out in your mind all the things that you would do with that temptation, now you're on the pathway to allowing that temptation from the mind to go to the heart. And once it goes to the heart, you might act it out in the flesh. So if you're not fighting off the temptation, like Yeshaya said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. If you're not fighting the temptation, if you're not fighting and, and looking for it and seeing what angle it's going to come from next, you might fall to it. You should always be prepared. Like it says in Sirach, set thy heart aright. Matter of fact, you know, it wouldn't hurt to go back and check out that lesson again. Um, Title, set thy heart aright. Um, so with that, you know, we must we must see through all this unlawful, disgusting things that, that all the madness that we see and... Um, Always understand and know that the Most High, He's always delivered the righteous out of a wicked generation. And, um, you know, going back and reading about the story a lot and seeing the things that He did, uh, you know, when we look around and we see the things that we see, go back and, and think about how what Lot must have felt, what he must have thought. It's the same thing. There's nothing new under the sun. Um, don't let these things stress you out. Don't let these things bring you down. Most High will deliver you. You just stay focused on that word. And um, with that, we are now going to the book of Luke. And we're going to get chapter 9 and verse 57. And um, I pray y'all follow along with us. Once again, the title of the lesson is Too Late in the Game. So go ahead, Ot. Luke chapter 9, verse 57. And it came to pass that as... They went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee where, wheresoever thou goest. Go and Yeshia said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. So, most high willing, we can get to that point. We are going to be pilgrims in the earth when the time comes. We should be setting our minds to that mode at this very moment. Keep that in mind. We're not greater than our master. We're the servant. We're not greater than Yeshaya. So he didn't have a place to lay his head. You're falling on hard times or whatnot. Hey, just remember, Yeshaya, he didn't have a place to live. 
he still kept it pushing. He kept still doing the work. So, go ahead. Let's get um, verse 59. Verse 59. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. So imagine that. Imagine that in your mind. You're like, you know what, Yeshaya, I'm going to follow you. I got to do this real quick. Guess what he told? Go ahead, uh, verse 60. Yeshaya said unto him, let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of Ahia. So he said, you know what, the people that care about those things, and of course we want to, you know, give our, our people an honorable um, burial and whatnot. But keep in mind, you can't let anything hinder you from going out and preaching the word. Your family and everybody, they want to be involved in all these big, huge celebrations of life as they have now, or whatever it is. You let the dead bury the dead. Don't let that stop you from the work. You do this work. You go and you preach the kingdom of the Most High. And what the what 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 the Meshach was pointing out, like the brother just said, he wasn't telling you not to put your loved one to rest. But he really wanted him to see. And I'm not speaking for the Mashiach. Know that he is telling him, let the dead bury the dead. But what he want him to see is that these people who are concerned about everything that's going on in life are dead. Let them handle that dead man. Because apparently it looked to me like that man died in sin. And these people out here living in sin, let them deal with that dead man. They're already dead and don't know it. He's spiritually dead. Keep that in mind. Don't, don't concern yourself with the things of the spiritually dead. You go out and you, you preach the Most High's word. Most High willing, you might wake them up. With that, we now get verse um, 61. Once again, we're at St. Luke. Luke 9 and 61. It's locked. Luke chapter 9, verse 61. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my home, which, which are at home at my house. So, it's just another example. Um, let, let, we're going to get the next verse and it'll, it'll relate everything. Go ahead. Right, verse and Yeshua said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of Ohio. So, you know. It's crystal clear. If you start this work, you start doing all the things you need to, and the cares of this world are, you know, behind you and they're whispering in your ear, and you turn them back, and you're not fit for the kingdom. And keep in mind, putting your hands to the plow and looking back. If you take your hands off the plow, that's a whole, that's a whole another thing. But this is still having it in your hands and and, and looking back. Double minded. Exactly, double minded. You go ahead. Up. And since we started off, we, we were just over there um, speaking about Lot. Look what happened. Lot and his family were delivered, moving ahead. And we're told not to look back, care not about the things of the world, that wicked place, Sodom and Gomorrah. And his wife looked back and death overtook her. Same thing. Well, the scriptures have all the examples that we need, so. You know, of course, you know, Yeshai wasn't telling his brother to be rude and just ignore the people of his house. But don't get caught up in the cares of things. He said, let, us, let the dead go bury the dead. They're spiritually dead. They're not going to understand what you're doing. This comes first. Um, so we must understand and know the Most High, he doesn't, he doesn't deal with double-minded. That's why he says, woe, woe to uh, the double-minded. Woe to the faint-hearted, woe to the feeble, those with feeble knees, faint hands, most high. He can't use you if you're double-minded. You need to be hot or cold, like Yeshia said. If you're in between, you, you must know you've already been spit out. Um, so with that, we're going to now go to Sirach. Now we're, in, um, we're in Sirach right here. This is not going to be... 16. Yeah, that's, that's not in the 16th. Right? Okay. All right, so... 
what we're about to go over, just really, really keep in mind. And well, we're just going to go over the scripture in Sirach chapter 7 and verse 16. It's in your Apocrypha. I pray you have that. If not, um, you know, you can follow along with us. I believe it's apocrypha.org or you can go to Bible Hub, pause this video, and you can catch up with us. So with that, we're going to the book of Sirach chapter 7 and verse 16. Sirach chapter 7 verse 16 Number not thyself among the multitude of sinners So don't number yourself among them Meaning don't go and, and, and be with a multitude of sinners With everybody you know is a sinner And you're always around sinners Don't place yourself around them It's like the old saying says You know you hang around a bunch of smokers You're going to end up being a smoker a woman hangs around a bunch of whores She's probably going to end up being a whore mm -hmm. It's just it's just that simple. You know, you grow up hanging around a bunch of gangbangers, you're probably going to be a gangbanger. So don't number yourself among the sinners because you might be enticed and you might fall back because you're unequally yoked. Go ahead, up. It's um, 17? Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, the end of 16. Number not thyself among the multitude of sinners, but remember that wrath will not tarry long. Simple, crystal clear. Go ahead, up. Let's get 17. Humble thyself greatly. Humble thyself greatly. The greater you are, the more you must humble yourself. Go ahead on. For the vengeance of the ungodly is fire and worms. What do you want? The kingdom or fire and worms? So, it's not over yet. We got a long way to go until Yeshia comes back. And, um,. A lot of work to do. Exactly. He didn't say a long time. He said a long way. Like, oh, I got a gang of time. Nah, you don't know if you're going to wake up tomorrow. You don't know if you're going to make it to the end of tonight when the sun goes down. Yes, sir. You don't know that. So um, let's, we're staying in the book of Sirach. We're now going to chapter 9, and we're going to get um, verse 11. Sirach chapter 9, verse 11. Envy not the glory of a sinner, mm -hmm. for thou knowest not what shall be his end. You got everybody today, they look at the people they see on TV, entertainment industry, sports industry, music industry, and they envy the glory that they get. They want to be the next so and so, and, and you know, they, they want to be known by the people, they want to be famous. And they're not taking into account that their end is going to be, as we just read, the vengeance of the ungodly is fire and worms. They don't think about those things. And that's the entire world just idolizing these people. Not even understanding what these people had to do behind closed doors to even get in that position. So envy not the glory of a sinner. Go ahead, let's get verse 12. Verse 12. Delight not in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in. So you need to really think about the things that you're doing that you take pleasure in. Don't delight in the things that the ungodly take pleasure in. And usually it's abominable things. Usually it's fornication and sorcery and oppressing the righteous. So don't delight in those things. Of course, we, we understand that those that are going to be coming across this video are not going to be delighting in those things. But we all come from different walks of life. We all have former sins that Satan tries to use against us to try to entice us back into his world. Remember, if everybody that's ungodly takes pleasure in doing those things, it's not for you. Go ahead on. But remember, they shall not go unpunished into their graves. Crystal clear. They're going to pay for all those things. It might seem like they're living it up, having a good time now, smiles on their faces, everybody's laughing. They get whatever they want. Fire on worms. They already, they already traded. They already traded. They, they already know what they get. Um. So with that, um, you know, sometimes people, they, they get pulled back into the world because of a false sense of freedom that they might have. You know, seeing worldly people be worldly and being sinful. They think, you know, I have no restrictions. I can eat what I want. I can do what I want on whatever day. Um, and they envy that so-called fun. And, you know, at some point, a spirit overtakes them and they start to desire to leave off the path that we're on and try another one. And that mentality is, is one that the adversary uses against us 
to, to get us to go back into the old world, to the old person, to the old ways. And, you know, the media, um, pretty much everything you see on TV and everything that you hear, it just bombards your mind with images of, of women, people having fun, people getting drunk, people partying, getting high. Fornicators just running around and um, make no mistake, they're having all that fun, but they will be judged like we just read, fire and worms. And I want to make an example of how we envy these people who live this way. Let's take Tupac, for instance. He went too far. Everybody wants to be like Tupac. I mean, not be like him. They envy him and loved him and worshipped him. Still to this day. Till this day. But he had the price to pay for what he was doing. And the Most High said he would not be mocked. So you wouldn't decide your Alva cover, you're going to be hung up on the cross like you shedded your blood. And your lyrics are talking about eat the flesh, flesh of my flesh. And you get to talking about Hail Mary and blasphemy. That you get what you got coming. The grace was lifting up off that man and there was no more mercy. And now he's paying the price for the things he did and those that he deceived. The Most High will not be mocked. And you better remember that. We're held accountable and have to pay for the things we do. Now, another thing. I don't know if anybody, you know, those out there that saw the documentary in his own words. They showed him in ballerina classes, doing ballet. Um, now all of a sudden he's this... He's this hard thug. He didn't even have a, 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 a police record until after he, he started doing music. He, he started taking these roles like in Juice. And he, he wanted to take the roles that he was playing and now live them. That's the spirits. Exactly. Not to mention for those that think that he didn't have to, you know, take the Baphomet oath and, and the things that come with that. I don't know if y'all remember, but he took a picture in a tub. Naked, naked with a bunch of men. With a bunch of jewelry on. Don't think. But everybody wants, you know, he wants to holler this thug life when he was a ballerina. I mean, think about these things, man. Really, really think about who is portraying themselves as what. Because pretty much everybody that's mainstream in the music industry, they're a sodomite. If they're not a sodomite, um, and that's not what they prefer, they still had to get down. To get down. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So, with that, we are now going to the book of Revelations. Chapter 3 and verse 13. And um, we're going to take these words that Yeshaya um, gave unto the church of the Laodiceans and really, really take to heart what he's saying. And really ask yourself right now if you're hot or you're cold because it's too late in the game to be in between with all these things coming down. With that, we're going to get into the book of Revelations, chapter 3 and verse 13. And whenever you're ready, I. Right. Revelations, chapter 3, verse 13. He that hath an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So we have these ears. We have the ears Yeshua is talking about. Most willing, I pray you do too, or else you wouldn't be watching this video. We have the ears. Let's listen to what Yeshua is saying unto them. Go ahead. Huh? And unto the angel of the church of Lesodin, Les, say the word. Laodiceans. Laodiceans. Right. These things saith, these things saith the Most High. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of Ahia. Understand and note, Shia, he's the beginning of the creation. I said the most high. Yeah, you said where it says the amen. And Should just be. just just for those who you know, they might be entertaining the whole comedic doctrine. Um, this is not Amen Ra. Um, you know, this word should be translated the trustworthy, the firm. Um, that's how it can be trans translated. So um just keep that in mind. If you're entertaining that comedic nonsense, um, like the scriptures say, um, they love the abominations of the Egyptians. They wanted to go back to Egypt. It's no coincidence that people are waking up today and you got these comedic people out there and their minds are now geared towards and getting pulled out of the truth and going into those comedic doctrines. Um, so with that, let's get verse 15 on. Verse 15, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. So no, if you are wavering, if you are double-minded, Yishai, Most High, they see everything, they know everything, you're not playing nobody, you might play me, you might play my brother, although he's good at discerning things. Um, 
playing yourself pretty much. Most high, Shia, see everything. They know everything. Go ahead, up. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold or hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So Yeshaya wishes that you were just cold or you were just hot. Not in between. I mean, at least some of these people out here, you know, they satanic or whatever. They're hot. They chose a side. They're not at least going back and forth. So if you're calling yourself righteous, you shouldn't be going back and forth. You should be hot for the most high for these scriptures, ready to do the work that's necessary, not be like, you know, well, I got invited to this or if I say, hey brother, we ready to Sabbath, we gonna get our study on. He said, Well let me I don't think I'll have nothing I'm supposed to be going to or doing. You ain't supposed to be doing nothing, brother. It's the Sabbath. Exactly. Exactly. Go ahead, let's get verse 16. Verse 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot. So you can't make a choice. You can't make your mind up. Most High has blessed you with this knowledge, and you can't decide what you want to do. Go ahead, on. I will spew thee out my mouth. Say it again. I will spew thee out my mouth. Already spat out. You Already spat out. Especially if you've been in this truth for five, ten plus years, and you're still lukewarm. You must know. And take into account, you've already been spit out. You you can, you know, still have the appearance of a brother who's righteous and all these things. But if you have that internal struggle within yourself and you're giving yourself over to fornication, you're giving yourself over to coveting things and actually stealing those things, whatever it may be, doesn't matter who you are, or how highly esteemed you are, if you are lukewarm, you've been spit out. And please believe in it, it's an unfortunate thing, but some of the people that we're going to come across in this walk, some of them have already been spat out too. Just make sure it isn't you. Um, so with that, let's and get... Uh, sometimes I worry about myself if I've been spit out. If I've been spewed out because I'm like, you're not doing enough. You're not doing enough. And, and I have to question myself. Are you doing enough because the moment that's how I got rid of me? No. He hasn't because I still have this drive in me to do his will. But I'm questioning if I'm doing enough because I already know the, the reason for that. I can't do enough to repay the most high for the sacrifice he gave through me to, through his son, knowing the wicked, wretched man that I was. So I'm going to keep asking, am I doing enough? And the answer to that is no. I'm not. Never enough. The scriptures say everybody has their own measure of faith, their own measure of grace, their own measure of everything. So some of us, even though we can't repay that debt, we know, like the brother just got through saying, we know how wicked we were. So we know that there's nothing that we can do to ever repay it. And that's what gives us that drive. Just like Paul. Think about Paul. He was out there murdering the Christians, locking them up. He knew he could never repay for what he was doing to the Most Highest people that believed in Yeshia. So what did he do? He went out, he established a majority of the churches, he brought a majority of all the letters in the New Testament that we read because he knew he couldn't do enough. He even took a vow of celibacy. So, understand and know, something's got to drive you and if you're shy of shedding his blood, is it enough to drive you to, that you have this second chance? Maybe you need to reassess, you know, your your, your, the way you think and how you want to live your life and really ask yourself are you lukewarm and if you are you already know the answer of where you're at you need to do whatever it takes go back to that first love that had you overzealous and hot for the most high and rebuild that foundation learn everything all over again to build yourself back up as long as you have breath in your lungs you have a chance um I believe we're at verse 17. Huh? 17. Revelations chapter 3 verse 17. Because thou said, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So this is what some of the people of the world today say. And even some of these people who, you know, want to be in this truth. I say want to be in it because if you're not doing the things of the truth, you're not in the truth. You just know about it. 
even Satan knows about it and the demons know about it. Um, so for those out there, they say, you know what, I'm, I'm rich. I have everything that I will ever want. I don't need anything from anybody. They don't understand how they are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Why is that? Let's get verse 18 on. Verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. All right, so now you try to say, I, I, I'm giving you counsel. Why don't you buy this from me? You say you got all this stuff. You know what? That money can't buy this. Try and buy this from me because you're poor, you're blind, you're naked. Go ahead up. And white remnant, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with and I anoint thy eye excuse me and anoint their eyes with eye slave. I self. I saw I slave that thou mayest see. Crystal clear. Say the word again. I self. I solve. Yeah. So um, we we get it's crystal clear what Yeshia said. Go ahead, let's get verse nineteen. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. So no, if you feel like you're being rebuked for things you might be doing that you haven't asked for forgiveness yet, no, the Most High He loves you. He's still dealing with you. That's why your mind hasn't been given over to reprobate, uh, and you know, you now no longer feel guilty for being wicked. Be thankful for that guilt. Most high, he's still dealing with you. Go ahead, uh, um, rest of that. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. So when you catch that, know that the Most High is rebuking you. He's chastening you. Be zealous, be thankful, and repent. And go, te go ten times harder for the Most High. Um, so, so the more that we receive in this world as far as material riches and, and possessions, um, the more we close our ears uh, to the Most High because... We know that, the, you know, to the most high, those things don't matter. Matter of fact, it's harder for you to get this knowledge and understanding and actually walk according to this way if you can pretty much have whatever you want. So, um, understanding, you know, if you might have a little something, you might be doing a little better than the next man, um, and the most high, he removes those things from you. Just be patient. He's bringing you to that lowest state. He's humbling you. So that you can now be built up how he wants you to be. So that he can utilize you. Most high, as, as we're wicked in this world and just coming into this truth we've been. Our minds have been fashioned after the ways of this world. We're no good to the most high. We're like a little baby all over again. You got to grow all over again. And you know, this, this is why it's called growing pains. It might hurt a little bit. It's hardship. You got to be long suffering through it. You got to get through it. And once you make it to that other side... The Most High, He rains down blessings upon you. Of course, they're not going to be monetary, but you're going to have a peace within you that you've never, ever felt before. You're not going to wake up and be thankful that you have the breath of life in your, in your lungs. You're going to be thankful that you can see. When, man, I, for myself, I, man, I used to, I wouldn't even care a lot of times. I didn't, for the majority of my life, I didn't care whether I lived or died. I just didn't care. I just thought it's another horrible day I have to get through. What am I going to have to do to get through it? What are the possibilities that can happen to me? You know what? This, let me go do something that will make me forget about it. So we need to be thankful to the Most High that He has brought us through what we have gone through and that we're here today. And we have this understanding. We cannot take it for granted. It's too late in the game if you're just sitting around with this knowledge. Get out there and do something with it. Um, so we are now going to the book of Proverbs. And we are going to get chapter 23 and verse 24. Uh, we have a lot to cover still, so we might um, might shave some of this lesson a little bit um, as we're hitting the 50-minute mark. But um, we've got another lesson that we're going to present. But um, we're going to the book of Proverbs, chapter 23 and verse 24. And uh, let's, take, let's, let's take into account what these words are telling us today. Go ahead, on. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 24. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. Mm -hmm. And he that begotteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Crystal clear. We want our, our fathers to greatly rejoice. And some of us, we didn't have the father in the home like we needed to. But our father in heaven, we want him to greatly rejoice. 
and, and knowing that we we do our best to be as righteous as possible. Um, go ahead, Let's let's get verse twenty-five. Verse twenty-five: Thy father and mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. So we need to be thankful that you know for those of us who have good relationships with our mothers still and. And they have seen our growth from how we used to be to now. And now they can rejoice and know that their son, their daughter is on the right path. When before, the things that we would do would be grievous unto them. That sometimes they wouldn't even sleep at night because they didn't know where we were at, what we were doing. If they were going to get a phone call from the police station, from juvenile services center. And if they were... Um, is this call saying something happened to my son or something happened to my daughter? Do I need to go identify a body? So um, just, just, just some examples. Let's get uh, verse 26. My son, give me thy heart and let thy eyes observe my ways. So that's what we must do. We give our heart unto the Most High. Let our eyes be focused on this book right here and let's observe his ways. And um, I believe we're going to skip the rest of these right here. Okay. And um, let's... Um, uh, you know what? No, let's, let's, just, let's, just, let's just go through it. We're going to go to verse 27. Verse 27. Let's understand about um, brothers that are still having a problem um, lusting and um, they want to entertain. Poor bunger want to entertain the women of these world this world as they're they're in the truth get an understanding on what these these women actually are go ahead up for a whore is a deep ditch so these whores out there they're a deep ditch it's going to be hard to climb out once you allow yourself to lay down with them and whatever spirits that have a hold of them that are making them whore themselves it's gonna be on you they're now on you and now you got to climb out go ahead up and a strange woman is a narrow pit. So you're dealing with a strange woman, a woman that is into a whole other spiritual type thing. Hey, it's going to be a narrow pit. And I know because I I warn my own children. I have children out there who are just out there in the world. And they these when he says these spirits would jump on you from that woman, that is so true. That is so true. One my one of my daughters was just telling me about something her brother is going through, and they seen him waking out like he's not even himself because of the woman he's dealing with. And I warned him about that that person, but I'm not gonna go deep into that right now. I'm just gonna point out: you be careful the females you mess with because you don't know what they're doing. And when these females are dealing with certain things, these things will jump on you as well and cause you to not even know who you are. And nobody else can even know who you are because you won't be yourself. Vice versa, when a female is messing with a man mm -hmm. that are doing these things, that spirit that's on that man, whether it be he's a crackhead, dope fiend, whatever the thing may be, these things will jump on you now and you're going to have that same because that's two fleshes become one. These spirits now have two vessels to travel back and forth with and just cause chaos until they destroy you and bring you to your death. That is their ultimate goal. Yep, and through that forms a, a what's known as a soul tie. And that spirit wants to operate back and forth and bring those people to destruction. And, you know, sometimes these women that are in these situations where they're being abused by this man and they don't, why do they feel like they still love him and have feelings? It's because that spirit, you still got that soul tie. It's still there. Um, so we're going to um, encourage our brothers and sisters to read down to verse 35, um, to read about um, the spirit of, of drunkenness. But we're going to skip that, um, but we encourage you to read it. And we are now... Um, going to uh, the book of Mark. We're going to get chapter 1 and we're going to get verse 3 and um, we're going to read about a little bit about John the Baptist um, and just keep in mind the whole point of bringing this out is because he came out of the wilderness alone, went out and started preaching and baptizing and um, pretty much we come out of the wilderness of wickedness alone <laughs> and we go out there we try to reach our friends, our families, our co-workers, whoever we can. Um, and it, it could be lonely, but always remember, 
all the prophets, Yeshai, everybody, they, you know, other than the disciples, Yeshai, sometimes he'd go off by himself. Uh, Moses went up to Mount by himself. Um, always, it's just one of those things where you're going to be alone a lot. Um, but with that, we're going to St. Mark, chapter 1, and we're going to get verse 3. Mark, chapter 1, verse 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Messiah, make his path straight. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Mm -hmm. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a, and with a girdle of skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey. So sometimes we go through we go through moments where we feel like we're by ourselves and um, we feel like we're missing out on everything. We feel like, you know, all these things happening around us. Uh, we want to, you know, our former selves would have wanted to take part in that. And we feel like we're missing out. And um, sorry. we can't let those things bother us. You know, man. So we just you know, just touched on that um, a little bit, but just keep in mind the actual life that we're living in this flesh is, is so minute compared to what we will receive if we make it unto the end. Um, so with that, we are going to second Ezra's. We're going to get chapter 13 and we're going to get verse 22. And, um, you know, let's, let's start gearing our minds towards um, not partaking in the foolishness of this world and um, its meaningless uh, aspirations. Um, got a few more scriptures to go through and then we're going to um, take a little intermission and, and get ready for another lesson. So once again, we're, we're in the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 13 and verse 22. Go ahead on. 2nd Ezra, chapter 13, verse 22. Whereas thou hast spoken of them that are left behind, this is their interpretation. So mainstream Christianity, they'll tell you that if you're left behind, you miss the rapture bus. Um, you know, if you didn't float in the sky, no, nah, that's not what these scriptures are saying. That right there, look forward to it, most high willing. We'll do a lesson on this, the rapture deception. I'm not going to name it the same thing because I see a lot of brothers putting it out there, but as few more points I want to throw in you know I know we cover a lot of things like all the different camps they do lessons the similar but a lot of them are missing things like we may miss something next camp gonna put in so that's the reason for this and some brother might see this video and not see something from another video or might see something from some brothers who were just out there wild and not even in scripture you know on some points they might be speaking scripture and true on some but hateful and kill everybody else and don't so uh, <laughs> that's why we do some of the same lessons because you might miss this because you've seen it was those brothers teaching and don't want to have anything to do with it so most high willing I'm going to be doing a lesson on that rapture deception and left behind but, um, going back to this um, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna see about those that are left behind and if it, if you actually want to be the one of those ones that are left behind uh, after we go through this i'm pretty sure you're going to want to be that is if you're strong enough <coughs> go ahead let's get verse uh, 23 verse 23 he that shall endure the peril peril and that and that time hath kept himself so if you can endure through all those things you'll have kept yourself you have kept the law statutes and commandments you didn't fold you didn't waver your faith was strong just like noah just like abraham Go ahead. Huh? They that be fallen into danger are such as the works. Read that again. Huh? They that be fallen into danger are such as such as such as have the have works. So if you're gonna fall into danger, that means you have works. You're actually doing something. You're actually a threat to this demonic system that's been set up and these demons operating behind those wicked vessels of flesh that they're using. You will actually 
have works if you're falling into danger. That's just what it is. People aren't falling into danger when these things happen. Pretty much they probably sold out and, and they're an agent. Um, scriptures are crystal clear. Go ahead up. And faith. The words. Oh, and faith toward, all, toward the Almighty. Faith. Know this, therefore, that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that are dead. Let me read that again. Aunt. Know this, therefore, that they which are left behind are more blessed than they that are dead. So it sounds like you want to be left behind. So um, just keep in mind how, and this is the thing that gets me. How do you think that, number one, the modern Christian church, they tell you just call on the J-man. Just say you have faith. Say this little prayer. Do nothing. Change nothing in your life. And when the time comes, we're going to float you up in the sky. And scripture don't say nothing about that. No. Nah. How can, how, the most size he says he puts acceptable men through the furnace of adversity. So if he finds you acceptable, you're going to be going through it. And you're going to persevere because you cleave unto the most high. You're going to be going through those things. So how can you expect to receive the greatest gift ever? I know I say this all the time, but this, this is the question I like to ask. How do you expect to get the greatest gift your mind can't even imagine? Doing nothing. And that ain't to say that uh, through our works that we're righteous and through our works, of course, we know it's because Yeshua gives us this chance. We have to be obedient unto him wasn't for him we wouldn't have this opportunity but you really think you're going to get that reward doing nothing not going to happen so with that um we are now going to go to second maccabees which is going to be in the 1611 so you might want to get your apocrypha um we're going to go to second maccabees chapter 6 and verse 11 and um Let's pay attention to what the brother's about to read and um, ask yourself if you would be willing to, to go through these things to keep the Most High's commandments. Once again, we're in 2 Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 11. 2 Maccabees chapter 6, verse 11. And others that had run together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly, being discovered. To Philip were all burnt together. So, how many of us just put yourself in a mind state? The Sabbath is coming. You now got to go hide somewhere in secret so that you can keep the Sabbath with your brethren. Just imagine that. Go ahead, on. Because they had a conscience to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day. So, just imagine. This is what they were going through. They knew that if they got caught, something could happen to them. They still did it anyways. They were suffering for righteousness sake. They were suffering for the most high. Go ahead, let's get verse 12. Verse 12. I beseech those that read this book that claim that they be not dis dis discouraged for these calamities. So we're not going through these scriptures and it, and it wasn't written in there to, to discourage you by any means. It's just to gear your mind up for the possibilities that we might face. To know that if you want to be obedient unto the Most High, sometimes you're going to have to suffer. Sometimes, as we read through the scriptures, people are put to death. Go ahead up. But that they judge those punishments. Where am I? But that they judge those punishments not to be for destruction, but for a chastening of our nation. So we know that. If that, say for instance, me and this brother, you know, we, we're out here where we're at and now we have to go hide to keep the Sabbath and we got caught and we're going to be put to death. We know that that punishment is not for destruction. It's for the chastening of our nation. To understand that. We're still dealing with the chastening from the sins of our forefathers. All these things must come to pass. Go ahead, Ak, let's get um, verse 13. For it is a token of this of his great goodness when wicked doers are not suffered any longer. It, when wicked doers are not suffered any long time, but for forthwith punished. So it's a great goodness. 
um, you know, as these things might happen and say, you know, you get caught up and you're going to be put to death. Uh, what might be coming next for other people is torture. And the Most High, He allowed you to not have to suffer through those things and not have to suffer through those tortures, but just to simply be put to death. You got to keep, keep these things in mind. The Most High, He gave us this breath of life. And he can take it at any time by any means he chooses to. Go ahead, let's get 14. For not as with other nations, whom the Most High patiently forbreath, forbeareth. forbeareth to punish. Like his scriptures say, the Most High, he's going to start, he's gonna start the uh, judgment in his own tabernacle. He's going to judge his own nation first. So just like the Most High, he's, he's waiting, he's, he's giving the other nations time to punish them. He's going he's gonna to clean house first. Go ahead, out. Till they become to the fullness of their sins, so dealeth he with us. Well, this is how he's going to deal with us. Until these other nations come to the fullness of their sin, to when it's time to that judgment to come, we're going to be going through these things. And you know what? It's a blessing if these things happen. It might not seem that way. But if the Most High decides to take the righteous man out of the destruction path that's coming, out of the increased torture and whatnot, all praises to the Most High. You didn't have to go through those things and really, really, really be tested. Um, go ahead, let's, let's get uh, verse 15. This that being come to the height of sin afterwards he should take vengeance of us mm -hmm. and therefore he never withdraweth his mercy from us and though he punished with adversity yet doeth he never forsake his people crystal clear so though we get punished with certain things he never forsakes us ever um, so with that we are now going to go through let me see. We're going to hit two more scriptures, and after that, we're going to take our intermission and get ready for another lesson. So we're going to 1 Peter chapter 3, or just lock it, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Once again, the title of this lesson is, it's, it's too late in the game. It's, it's too late to turn back. You should, if you, you know, if you've been in this walk for some time now, even a year, you, there's a plethora of things you could have learned in one year. There, there is no turning back. So with that, let's go to First Peter's chapter, chapter one and verse three. First Peter chapter one verse three. Blessed be the Most High and the Most High and Father of our Lord Yeshua Hamashiach, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by by the resurrection of Yeshua the Mashiach from the dead. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Yeah. To an inheritance inter incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of a higher through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Mm -hmm. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be. You are in heaviness through manifold temptation. So don't be in heaviness. Think about what's reserved for you if you endure. And don't let anything bring you down no matter what. Go ahead, let's get on 17. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than, than of gold, that, that perisheth. So understand and know that your faith is one of the most precious things that you can have. It's through your faith that you're going to make it through these things. And just like gold goes through the fire to be purified, your faith allows you to make it to the other side of that fire as you're in that furnace of adversity. Go ahead, on. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yeshua HaMashiach. So we should rejoice when we're going through the manifold temptations that's spoken of. And, and understand and know that as we're going through these things and as we're, we're able to fight them off and it gets easier and easier, 
we're getting spiritually stronger. We're getting to that point where it doesn't even matter what, what time of the game it is. We know that we're going in solid. Nothing's going to make us move to the left or to the right. Don't matter what time it is, we're ready for it. It takes a lot to get to that point, but that's where we need to be. Because you might be tried tomorrow morning when you wake up. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, there might be no internet access, no phones. You can't go to the store. You might, might have martial law. Um, now you're really going to be tried. Um, so with that, we're going to now go to Sirach chapter 17 and verse 26. And, um, you know, if you are wavering, going back and forth, um, this scripture is for you. And um, I pray y'all been uh, writing these scriptures down. Go ahead, Sirach 17 and 26. Sirach chapter 17, verse 26. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity. Turn away from that iniquity. Come to the Most High again. Go ahead. For he will lead for he will lead thee out of darkness and to the light of health and hate and to the light of health and hate thou and hate thou abomina abomination vehemently vehemently so the most high he will bring you out of that darkness he will allow you to be healed spiritually and learn to hate abomination vehemently and i'm going to say that again learn to hate abomination vehemently and you know, if anybody might come across this video, and according to the scriptures, they know that homosexuality is an abomination. Um, in no way, shape, or form are we telling anybody to go out and hate people. The act that they're doing is disgusting. It's an abomination. They're living in an abominable lifestyle. We don't want anybody to take this out of context and say that we are pushing a hate agenda uh, towards anybody. We don't hate anybody. We hate the abomination. We don't hate the people. Um, they have to make a choice. The Most High, he allows the sunlight to hit them. He allows the rain to come and nourish so that they can eat as well. He allows them to live. He's given them their grace. So be it. The chance to change what they're doing. Exactly. Repent. So I just, I, 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 I can see how people could take where it says hate abomination and now try to say that um, those that follow the scriptures are, are a hate group. We're not a hate group. Matter of fact, it's usually the opposite. We're the ones hated. Um, and everybody just uses their emotions and their little feelings as an excuse to go against us because they just want to be living the life of iniquity and abomination. So with that, um, you know, we must learn to develop a hatred for the things that were giving us over into that sinful nature that we were once living in. And we need to come to the Most High uh, with a, a new stronger diligence and, and, and be to that point to where Satan can't overcome. Like it says in Baruch, seeing as it was in your mind to go astray from the Most High, seek him ten times harder. That's exactly what we're telling you. So we encourage all the brothers and sisters to go and read Saint, uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 3 on down to 23. Um, just so they can go over the parable of the seed. Um, we've, we've gone over that parable plenty of times, but for time's sake... Um, we're going to cut this lesson short, um, and we'll bid you a higher speed, but we'll be back after this intermission. But as always, we'd like to give all praise, honor, glory to the Most High Haya, in the name of Yeshaya, and in the Holy Spirit, and Kwam Yashabala, Kwam Yashabala, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, we will be back shortly.